the light of Christ rising in glory, dispel the darkness of our hearts and minds. Thanks be to God. Rejoice, all heavenly choirs of angels. Christ has conquered. The risen Savior shines upon you. This is the night in which the true Lamb is slain. This is the night. This is the night. This is the night in which the children of Israel were led through the sea. This is the night. This is the night. This is the night in which all who believe in Christ are renewed in grace. This is the night. This is the night. The holiness of this night restores joy to those who mourn and humbles earthly pride. Therefore, this night, O God, receive our praise for the resurrection of Jesus Christ. May Christ, the morning star rising from the grave, shed light on the whole human race. And we pray. O God, preserve and protect your church, giving us peace in this time and forever. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, you are the creator of the world, the liberator of your people, and the wisdom of the earth. By the resurrection of your Son, free us from our fears, restore us in your image, and ignite us with your light. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void and the darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. And then God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God saw that the light was good and God separated the light from the darkness. And God called the light day, and the darkness God called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. And God said, let there be a dome in the midst of the waters, and let it separate the waters from the waters. So God made the dome and separated the waters that were under the dome from the waters that were above the dome. And it was so. And God called the dome sky, and there was evening. And there was morning, a second day. And God said, let the waters under the sky be gathered together into one place, and let the dry land appear. And it was so. And God called the dry land earth, and the waters that were gathered together, God called seas. And God saw that it was good. And then God said, let the earth put forth vegetation, plants yielding seed and fruit trees of every kind on earth that bear fruit with the seed in it. And it was so. And the earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed of every kind, and trees of every kind bearing fruit with the seed in it. And God saw that it was good, and there was evening, and there was morning the third day. And God said, let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate the day from the night. And let them be for signs and for seasons, for days and years. And let them be lights in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth. And it was so. And God made the two great lights, the greater light to rule the day, and the lesser light to rule the night, and the stars. And God set them in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth, to rule over the day and over the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good, and there was evening, and there was morning the fourth day. And God said, let the waters bring forth swarms of living creatures, and let birds fly above the earth across the dome of the sky. So God created the great sea monsters and every living creature that moves of every kind with which the wa waters swarm and every winged bird of every kind. And God saw that it was good. And God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply and fill the waters in the seas and let birds multiply on the earth. 
And there was evening, and there was morning, the fifth day. And God said, let the earth bring forth living creatures of every kind, cattle and creeping things and wild animals of the earth of every kind. And it was so. And God made the wild animals of the earth of every kind and the cattle of every kind and everything that creeps upon the ground of every kind. And God saw that it was good. And then God said, let us make humankind in our image according to our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over the cattle and over all the wild animals of the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created humankind in God's image. In the image of God, they were created. Male and female, God created them. And God blessed them and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. And God said, see, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is upon the face of the earth and every tree with seed and its fruit and you shall have them for food and to every beast of the earth into every bird of the air, into everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has breath of life. I have given every green plant for food, and it was so. And God saw everything that God had made, and indeed it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all their multitude and on the seventh day, God finished the work that God had done and rested from all the work. So God blessed the seventh day and hallowed it because on it, God rested from all the work. These are the generations of the heavens and the earth when they were created. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Especially now, we long for an ordered world. In spite of death and sorrow, the resurrection of Jesus Christ contains the promise of a new creation. Baptized into his death and resurrection, we are made witnesses to God's new creation, and it is very good. A reading from Exodus. As Pharaoh drew near, the Israelites looked back and there were the Egyptians advancing on them. In great fear, the Israelites cried out to the Lord. They said to Moses, Was it because there were no graves in Egypt that you have taken us away to die in the wilderness? What have you done to us, bringing us out of Egypt? Is it not the very thing we told you in Egypt? Let us alone and let us serve the Egyptians. For it would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the wilderness. But Moses said to the people, Do not be afraid. Stand firm and see the deliverance that the Lord will accomplish for you today. For the Egyptians whom you see today, you shall never see again. The Lord will fight for you, and you will only to keep still. Then the Lord said to Moses, Why do you cry out to me? Tell the Israelites to go forward. But you lift up your staff and stretch out your hand over the sea and divide it, that the Israelites may go into the sea on dry ground. Then I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians so that they will go in after them. And so I will gain glory for myself over Pharaoh and all his army, his chariots, and his chariot drivers. And the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord, when I have gained glory for myself over, over Pharaoh, his chariots, and his chariot drivers. The angel of God who was going before the Israelite army moved and went behind them. And the pillar of cloud moved from in front of them and took its place behind them. It came between the army of Egypt and the army of Israel. And so the cloud was there with the darkness, and it lit up the night. One did not come near the other all night. 
Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. The Lord drove the sea back by a strong east wind all night and turned the sea into dry land, and the waters were divided. The Israelites went into the sea on dry ground, the waters forming a wall for them on their right and on their left. The Egyptians pursued and went into the sea after them, all of Pharaoh's horses, chariots, and chariot drivers. At the morning watch, the Lord in the pillar of fire and cloud looked down upon the Egyptian army and threw the Egyptian army into panic. God clogged their chariot wheels so that they turned with difficulty. The Egyptians said, let us flee from the Israelites for the Lord is fighting for them against Egypt. Then the Lord said to Moses, stretch out your hand over the sea so that the water may come back upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots and chariot drivers. So Moses stretched out his hand over the sea and at dawn the sea returned to its normal depth. As the Egyptians fled before it, the Lord tossed the Egyptians into the sea. The waters returned and covered the chariots and the chariot drivers, the entire army of Pharaoh that had followed them into the sea. Not one of them remained. But the Israelites walked on dry ground through the sea, the waters forming a wall for them on their right and on their left. Thus the Lord saved Israel that day from the Egyptians, and Israel saw the Egyptians dead on the seashore. Israel saw the great work that the Lord did against the Egyptians. So the people feared the Lord and believed in the Lord and in the servant Moses. Then the prophet Miriam, Aaron's sister, took a tambourine in her hand, and all the women went out after with her with tambourines and with dancing. And Miriam sang to them, Sing to the Lord, for the Lord has triumphed gloriously. Horse and rider the Lord has thrown into the sea. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. We long for, fr for freedom from fear and confusion, sin and death. The resurrection of Christ brings us through the sea into new life, and baptism has enacted that exodus. A reading from the book of Ezekiel. The hand of the Lord came upon me and brought me up out of the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the middle of a valley and it was full of bones. And the Lord led me all around these bones, and there were very many lying in the valley, and they were very dry. And the Lord said to me, Mortal, can these bones live? And I answered, Only you know, God. So the Lord said to me, Prophesy to these bones, and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, I will cause breath to enter you, and you shall live. And I will lay sinews on you, and will cause flesh to come upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and you shall live, and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I had been commanded. And as I prophesied, suddenly there was a noise, a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to its bone. And I looked, and there were sinews on them, and flesh had come upon them, and skin had covered them, but there was no breath in them. And then the Lord said to me, prophesy to the breath, prophesy, mortal, and say to the breath, thus says the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. And I prophesied, as the Lord had commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived, and stood on their feet, a, vol a vast multitude. And then the Lord said to me, Mortal, 
These bones are the whole house of Israel. And they say, our bones are dried up and our hope is lost. We are cut off completely. Therefore, prophesy and say to them, thus says the Lord God, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people. And I will bring you back to the land of Israel. And you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people. And I will put my spirit within you and you shall live. And I will place you on your own soil. And then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken and will act, says the Lord. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. You and I, we are dry bones. The Spirit of God poured out from Christ's death and resurrection makes us alive together with Jesus Christ. A whole people standing together in new life, even when we are separated from each other. A reading from Jonah. Now the word of the Lord came to Jonah, son of Amittai, saying, Go at once to Nineveh, that great city, and cry out against it, for their wickedness has come up before me. But Jonah set out to flee to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. He went down to Joppa and found a ship going to Tarshish. So he paid his fare and went aboard to go with them to Tarshish, away from the presence of the Lord. But the Lord hurled a great wind upon the sea, and such a mighty storm came upon the sea that the ship threatened to break up. Then the mariners were afraid, and each cried to his God. They threw the cargo that was in the ship into the sea to lighten it for them. Jonah, meanwhile, had gone down into the hold of the ship and had lain down and was fast asleep. The captain came and said to him, What are you doing? Sound asleep. Get up. Call on your God. Perhaps the God will spare us a thought so that we do not perish. The sailors said to one another, Come, let us cast lots, so that we may know on whose account this calamity has come upon us. So they cast lots, and the lot fell on Jonah. Then they said to him, Tell us why this calamity has come upon us. What is your occupation? Where do you come from? What is your country? And of what people are you? I am a Hebrew, he replied. I worship the Lord, the God of heaven, who made the sea and the dry land. Then the men were even more afraid and said to him, What is this that you have done? For the men knew that he was fleeing from the presence of the Lord because he had told them so. Then they said to him, What shall we do to you? that the sea may quiet down for us. For the sea was growing more and more tempestuous. Then he said to them, Pick me up and throw me into the sea. Then the sea will quiet down for you. For I know it is because of me that this great storm has come upon you. Nevertheless, the men rowed hard to bring the ship back to the land, but they could not. For the sea grew more and more stormy against them. Then they cried out to the Lord, Please, O Lord, we pray, do not let us perish on account of this man's life. Do not make us guilty of innocent blood. For you, O Lord, have done as it has pleased you. So they picked Jonah up and threw him into the sea, and the sea ceased from its raging. Then the men feared the Lord even more, and they offered a sacrifice to the Lord and made vows. But the Lord provided a large fish to swallow up Jonah, 
and Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. Then Jonah prayed to the Lord his God from the belly of the fish. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. We have often run away from our vocation as witnesses to new life, hope, and forgiveness in Christ. His resurrection, like Jonah coming out of the fish after three days, and our baptism into that resurrection, making us like Jonah, restores us to that vocation. The Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciples set out and went towards the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and, and went into the tomb. And he saw the linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who reached the tomb first, also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture, that he must rise from the dead, so the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. And as she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. And they said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? And she said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. And when she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing Jesus to be the gardener, Mary said to him, sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him and I will take him away. And Jesus said to her, Mary. Mary turned and said to Jesus in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. And Jesus said to her, do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and to your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that Jesus had said these things to her, the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Mary weeps, and so do we. But do not weep. The risen Christ calls each of us by name, and we remember the other readings. Restored vocation, our dry bones made alive, freedom from slavery and fear, and the very down payment on a new creation. Alleluia! Christ is risen. Faithful, raise the string of triumph and glad. 
darkness, God hath brought forth Israel into joy from sadness. Loose from Pharaoh's bitter yoke, Jacob's sons and daughters, led them with unmoistened foot through the Red Sea waters. Tis the spring of souls today, Christ hath burst his prison, and from three days sleep in death, as a sun hath risen, all the winter of our sins, long and dark is flying, from his light to whom we give, laud and praise undying. Now the of seasons bright with the day of splendor with a royal feast of feast comes its joy to render comes to glad Jerusalem who with true affection welcomes in unwearied strains Jesus of death, nor the tomb's dark portal, nor the watchers, nor the seal, hold thee as a mortal. But today amidst the twelve, thou didst stand bestowing, that thy peace which evermore passeth human In remembrance of your baptism into the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, let us confess the baptismal creed. I believe, believe in, in God, God, the Father, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. On this most holy night, we pray for the church, the earth, the world, those in need, and all the members of God's family, responding to each petition with the words, hear our prayer. We pray, O oh God, for all the churches around the globe, for their bishops and clergy, for the newly baptized, for the believers who cannot assemble for worship, for faithful endurance during this time of sorrow and distress, and for a deepening sense of your presence among us. O oh God, you are our temple. In your mercy. Hear our prayer. 
We pray, O God, for the well-being of creation, for the health of seas and rivers and lakes, for all those who, who contain life and newness, for the will to care for your earth, O oh God, you are our rainbow of promise. In your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray, O oh God, for peace and justice in the world, for an end to war and international turmoil, for concord in our troubled society, for heads of state, legislators, local civic leaders, that they enact wise procedures to care for all of your people. O oh God, you are our mighty fortress. In your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh God, we pray for all who are facing struggles in health, in body, mind, or spirit. We pray for the sick and the dying. We pray for those who mourn their dead. All those who are away from loved ones. Those who fear the present and the future. We pray for all those who seek to make us well. Fill the aching in our hearts with your merciful power. O oh God, you are our everlasting arms. In your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray, O oh God, for all in need for those suffering for the faith, for those who are poor, hungry, and homeless, for those who are sick and those awaiting death, and for those we name before you now. For Janice, Darlene, Marge, Pudge, Carol, Linda, Avery, Ben, Reuben, Jim, Ed, Carl, Glenn, Diane, Kathy, Judy, Brenda, Jeanette, Rachel, Gladys, Shirley, Sydney, and Jay. O oh God, you are the healer of our every ill. In your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray, O oh God, for the desires of our heart. O oh God, you are our heart's desire. In your mercy, hear our prayer. Receive our thanks for all who died in faith and bring us at the final resurrection into your everlasting life where sorrows will be no more. O oh God, our beginning and our end, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Into your gracious and mighty hands, O God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our, our Father, Father who art Lord in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy, thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The 15th station, Jesus rises from the dead. But death is not the end. The end of this story is so wonderful that no words can do it justice. Look, says the angel, pointing into the empty tomb. Some people have no eyes to see, but slumber on in a tangle of bodies, oblivious to the deeds of God. But those who do see what has happened have eyes for nothing else. May we be in their number, our lives taken up with Christ in wonder, love, and praise. What praise can be enough for this moment? What music loud enough for the triumph? How can I thank God enough for this salvation? How can I live with so much happiness? Let Christians make their offerings to the Easter victim. Let their praises burn with fire. A lamb was sacrificed to save the sheep. Christ, the innocent, has reconciled sinners to God. What an amazing battle between death and life. The king of life was dead, but now he lives and rules. Tell us, Mary of Magdala, what you saw when you went to the tomb. I saw the tomb of Christ, but he was alive. I saw his glory as he rose. I saw angels who bore witness to his rising. I saw the linen wrappings and his cloth from around his head. Christ has risen. My hope has risen. He is going ahead of you into Galilee. We know that Christ has truly risen from the dead. Victorious King, have mercy. Amen. Alleluia. As the light of dawn began to break, our eyes began to see the world in the new colors of truth. Blue for the clear, pure heavens without a cloud on the horizon. Red for the flames of joy that burn in our hearts. Yellow for the shining sun that throws new light on all humanity. Green for the freshness of the grass springing dew-decked out of the fertile earth. Purple for the royal power of the king of the Jews, the king of kings. Orange for the sun-drenched stones that reflect the warmth of the Easter fire. White for the radiance of his robes as he rises, spotless and unstained. Gold for the brilliance and the rays of his glory now and forevermore. Let us pray. Eternal giver of life and light, this holy night shines with the radiance of the risen Christ. Renew your church with the spirit given us in baptism, that we may worship you in sincerity and truth, and may shine as a light in the world. Through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless us now and forever. Amen. Amen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. 
Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia.